Fala galera do canal, me chamo Julien no vídeo de hoje veremos o antes e depois da mídia inglesa. Eles se colocaram bem acima da seleção brasileira, porém na hora do jogo foram lá e perderam da mesma forma. Esse vídeo é relembrando a época do canal Fute Rápido, então já deixe seu like e inscreva-se no nosso canal para ajudar na divulgação e valeu! Brazil aren't the force they once were. The, probably the best team in the world back then. They're not any longer, are they? Brazil any good now? <laughs> Does Brazil still have that fear factor with their name? No, absolutely not. Are they producing players? Yes, they are. But I tell you what, they're not producing team. I mean, yeah, they've got some names. They've still got Vinny Jr. Um, you know, after that, I'm struggling. I mean, <laughs> who who do you want in this? What's probably going to start against England? Who do you want in your team? And and right now, there isn't that many. I mean, Rafia, uh, they're on a horrible run. I mean... If you want to be positive, they sit in a qualifying position uh, in the qualifiers for a World Cup. But the fact is, the six. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a team that, at the worst, should be sitting second behind Argentina, and they're, and they're floundering. So yeah, this is not vintage Brazil by a long, long way. Momento, quem você acha que tem melhor time? Inglaterra ou Brazil? Sure, it might be Brazil, it might be England. Um, at the moment, I'd probably say England, but Brazil's got some really good players as well, so yeah. could be a good game. The England squad is pretty good, I think. Brazil's going through. Not, Brazil never transitions, right? But uh, it depends, though. It depends on what kind of defense Brazil has. I would say England. England for now. England. England. Yeah, why? Um, but I think Brazil are in a bit of transition at the moment, so I think England. Especially today, obviously, we've got a lot of players missing, haven't they? So I think definitely England today. Okay. Mm. England versus Brazil. 2-2. Two -two. Mm. Fun game. Time for experiments. Lilo and Stitch. Brazil any good now? <laughs> I mean, it's still good. Hey, don't do that. <laughs> Be no, careful. No, no, no. <laughs> I think England win, actually. I'm just going to predict to win because I want them to win. Um, I think it'll be a good game. 2-1. 2-1. Three-one England. A Brazil team, and I'm thinking, this is Brazil. Like this is now what Brazil have to offer. This is Brazil. Brazil. The only names you can really take out of that Brazil team that you look at and go and you feel, Brazil, Vinicius Junior, Rodrigo, maybe Bruno Guimarães. Rafinha, mm, mm. apart from that, and then everyone was just waiting for Indrik to come on, right? Funny enough, everyone was waiting, like even the England fans, it got to minute 70 and it was like, I'm done with this, can I just see Indrik please? Like, and that's Brazil. And then you look at this England team and you look on paper and you look at what this, the, the, the talent that's in this team and what England have to offer. And you think, Surely there's a chance, playing at Wembley as well. Surely England should be taking this game and uh, causing some sort of a threat here. What happened to the days when you looked at Brazil and you felt Brazil? It was Brazil, you know, Dida, Cafu, Roberto Carlos, Lucio, Roberto, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, Kaká, R9. I mean, pff, you could look at Brazil and just go, I quit, I quit. I'm not even walking onto the pitch. We're not even going to take part. We're not, this match is not taking place. That used to be Brazil, yeah? You shouldn't be being linked to Rotherham United. And yet we go and see the sharp reality against Brazil again. And it's not the first time we've seen it. You could give Southgate the Mona Lisa and he'd rest his cup of tea on it and, you know, drop crumbs all over it. He doesn't know what to do with fine art. He doesn't know what to do with this England squad. And he gets away with it on PR and vibes. And the media fall for it. I think even some of England's players fall for it. This weird position where for the last few days, you've got the British media linking the guy to the, to the Man United job and other jobs and saying what a great coach he is. And what they've done is, they've done something we don't do. They've forgotten what England is like under Southgate. And I fell into that trap many a time, but I didn't this week because they dared to link him to my club. We look at the England squad 
we get really excited and say we're going to batter Brazil, we're going to batter everybody, we're so good. Because we see Foden for Man City, we see Rice for Arsenal, we see Kane for Bayern Munich, we see all these great players, Bellingham at Real Madrid, and we go, put them all together and what have you got? It's definitely going to work. And it never does. It never does, because despite all the great man management and despite all the brilliant press conferences where you probably get croissants and hot coffee provided by Southgate, the reality is you can buy all the presents for somebody to make them marry you. But when the home life's boring, the home life's boring. And the point is, England are boring under Southgate. We now, Gareth Southgate insisted he was pleased with England's performance as they fell to their first defeat at Wembley in 21 games, a 1-0 loss to Brazil. It's the first time in more than a year that England have failed to score, but there's also new injury concerns. But there was a new star on show at Wembley as Endrick became the youngest player to score a senior goal at the stadium. I don't think he should, is the blunt answer to that, Rob, and that's pretty blunt. But, um, look, the England manager has to put a bit of a gloss on what was a very poor performance by England yesterday, for my money, uh, and a very disappointing performance, I think you have to say. There were a couple of plus, plus points. Anthony Gordon made his senior debut. I thought he was outstanding, both going forward and tracking back to try and win the ball back at times. He slotted in and looked absolutely to the manner born in that England shirt. And Kobe Mainu and Ezra Konza also got debuts. Now, both, both did okay. I mean, Kobe Mainu was an 18-year-old. Had a bit of a cameo at uh, one stage and, and, and looked really, really comfortable in that environment, which I think was very pleasing for him and for England. But beyond those few positives, it was very poor. England were very poor. They didn't have a tempo. They didn't have a rhythm. That was easily disrupted by a very physical Brazil side who targeted Jude Bellingham, uh, seemed to uh, try and foul or, or, or disrupt England every time they, they had the ball. And it was just very, very poor. The concerns we've been talking about for several years now are still there for all to see. England were very poor defensively. Um, Gareth Southgate didn't mention the goal there, which was a straight ball over the top. Jordan Pickford did what Jordan Pickford does, made a really good save, and, and Endrick scored on the rebound. But there were two other occasions where, but for a, a, an excellent save from Pickford or the width of a post, Brazil would have scored again. England could have lost that 3-0 last night, conceivably, you have to say. And the real concerning point for me is that there are an awful lot of injuries. Yes, there were 12 injuries going into the game and more that were unavailable to Gareth Southgate. The worst injury crisis he's had since he's been England manager. But eight of those starting 11, I think Gareth Southgate would consider part of his strongest 11 they could ever put out if everybody was available. Jordan Pickford in goal, Kyle Walker at right back, Harry Maguire and John Stones in the middle, Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham as two of the three midfielders. Phil Foden was there as well. Of course... Harry Kane, the captain, the talisman, the, the, the man who leads the line and leads by example, is a huge loss. Um, but eight of those 11, you would expect, if they're fit, and if everybody's fit, to be in England's starting 11 for the first game at the Euros in the summer, and indeed if, as far as they go when they're playing the better teams in the later stages if they get there. So that'll be the concern. Mitigation, yes, but real worries for the England manager, I think. Yeah. Então, você vê que a Inglaterra tá lascada no dia que seu talismã é Harry Kane, o cara que nunca ganhou absolutamente nada na carreira. Ele é um excelente jogador? Lógico que é, só que nunca ganhou nem pau ímpar. Eu vejo muita gente falar que a seleção brasileira não é a mesma de antigamente, só que no meu ponto de vista ela não precisa ser. O futebol hoje em dia tá extremamente nivelado e apesar da pouca idade dos nossos jogadores, eles estão se destacando bastante no cenário europeu. O Vinícius Júnior já foi campeão de Champions League sendo protagonista, Rodrigo já foi campeão de Champions League sendo protagonista e não foi por qualquer time, foi pelo Real Madrid. O Paquetá vai agora pro Manchester City é, depois de destruir na Premier League, ou seja, Cara, dá pra jogar, dá pra ser campeão. A nossa seleção ela é jovem, mas ela não é fraca. Precisam dar tempo pra esses caras é, aparecerem no futebol mais ainda. Tá chegando agora o Hendrick e tem até o Rodrigo Muniz, que nem foi convocado. Só que foi o cara que, se eu não me engano, que mais marcou gols na Premier League. Ou seja, um atacante brasileiro que não foi nem convocado, foi o cara que mais marcou gols na Premier League desde fevereiro. Ou seja, a gente precisa ter uma certa boa vontade com essa seleção. Deixar essa garotada, esses jogadores novos, esse novo ciclo começar. E eu acredito, cara, que a gente vai chegar em algum lugar nessa seleção. Lógico, eu sempre acreditei em todos os times. Porém, nesse, eu tô botando muita fé. É, eu espero que vocês comentem aqui embaixo o que vocês pensam sobre tudo isso. Deixe seu like, inscreva-se no nosso canal para ajudar na divulgação e valeu!